Hey kid, check out this notebook cooler. It's like totally the hottest thing ever. Get it? That was a pun. You know what else you should get? This notebook cooler. Or should you? That's what we're gonna tackle today, which is a figure of speech. I will not be tackling anything because head injuries. Concussion. Yes. So notebook coolers have kind of always been around and for good reason, we think. Heat problems can be inevitable when you cram so much powerful hardware into such a tiny little package, if you know what I mean. And back in the old days, you needed a Targus chill mat just to keep your laptop from catching fire. But now, many manufacturers, including Asus and MSI, are implementing a lot of features dedicated to cooling, such as vapor chambers, turbo fan mode, and even dedicated discrete heat pipes for the CPU and GPU. I mean, are these things effective or is it a bunch of marketing nonsense and do we still need, you know, ice lap coolers? Well, that's where we come in. We're gonna take a look at whether modern gaming laptops need any special care in order to function at full speed. So for our testing, we'll be using Anthony's MSI GS40 gaming notebook. It's got the Intel Core i7-6700HQ processor and a GTX 970M graphics card in high performance mode plugged into the wall. It's the mobile workstation he's gonna be using at CES, so he needs that thing to perform as fast as possible. This is our representation of what Anthony's laptop would look like if he was here in the morning, but he's not. So we'll be using 3 Mark as our benchmark since it's a good representation of a somewhat high workload that most people would like to see perform well with a gaming notebook. We won't be doing any Intel burn test or Furmark or anything like that since those really are putting unrealistic loads on the machine. And we're trying to offer useful consumer advice, not like stuff like, hey, you should probably water cool your MacBook like some idiot online. Anyway, the first test is pretty simple. So we use the GS40 on a flat wooden table. This is probably the most common responsible owner scenario, although it doesn't necessarily have to be wood. Metal and glass are acceptable too, or even, you know, like a, a high technology polycarbonate. That would also be fine. So with an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius, our CPU and video cards sit idle at 55 and 45 degrees Celsius respectively. Not too bad, especially since the internal cooling fans are pretty much off at this point. So we got a score of 3396 in Firestrike Extreme and hit a maximum temperature of 75 degrees on the CPU and 65 degrees on the video card. So for the notebook cooler, we decided to try the Cooler Master Notepal X3. It's got a 200 millimeter fan, USB pass-through, adjustable fan speed, adjustable height, LED lighting that you can talk a lot and off, and even a little vent at the front for cooling off your sweaty hands. So we set the cooler on its highest position and maxed out the fan at 800 RPM. Results? Well, at idle, we see a degrees of... a degrees. No grease. No grease on your computer at all. It removes all the grease. Whoa. Sorry, we see a decrease of 2 and 4 degrees. And performance? Well, we got a score of 3428 in Firestrike Extreme and it lowered our max temperatures by 5 degrees on both chips. It's actually a fairly nice drop in temperature even if it didn't affect performance all that much. But more on that later. So Anthony decided to do one more test as kind of a worst case scenario, a bed. Yes, that's right. Being in bed with Anthony is the worst case scenario by his own admission. He wrote it here in this script. So it's a soft, fluffy surface that completely plugs up every vent on the bottom of the laptop. And you know what? Actually, it wasn't that bad. At idle, the processor was just two degrees hotter and the video card jumped up nine degrees. And then after running the benchmark, the score was 3392 with a max temperature of 78 and 71 degrees on both of those chips. So realistically speaking, that's still pretty safe and usable for short periods of time. However, for safety reasons, he didn't try it for longer amounts of time because, uh, you know, that's the excuse that he uses when Anyway, so what do all these numbers mean? Well, it's safe to say that manufacturers have gotten pretty darn good at implementing effective cooling systems on notebooks, not to mention that Intel and Nvidia, the two chip makers at play here, have both <laughs> done a really good job of reducing their power consumption and therefore heat output over the last few generations. And while we still do not recommend using your laptop on your bed, remember heat is one of the biggest factors when it comes to premature hardware death, we have determined that a notebook cooler, while it does help your 
computer run cooler, even in this sort of worst case scenario of a very small machine with very high end hardware packed in it, it's not going to make a difference to performance. So thanks for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips. If you want to check us out on social media over here, then wait, more videos here. Check us out on social media over here and uh, Run us away! Alright. I just I got bored. <laughs> <laughs> I actually yeah, I was like, this is a lot of water.